These days, you can never be too careful when it comes to computer security, and it seems like there's more threats than ever. Anything from phishing websites stealing your passwords to ransomware that encrypts your data unless you pay up. But most of these risks can be minimized if you do the basic things I'm gonna go over in this video. And it's not as difficult as you think, so you can rest easy. Now, before we get started, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Storyblocks, who also provided the stock images you just saw and that I'll be using in more of this video to help illustrate some points. With Storyblocks, you'll be able to find all kinds of stock images imaginable, including high quality photos, illustrations, vectors, icons, and more. You can download anything from the 400,000 images in their member library, plus you'll save 60% on any content from their marketplace. And actually, one example is the wallpaper on my desktop right back here now. It's just a cool abstract background I found on there, so there are lots of different uses for these images. And you guys are getting a deal because Storyblocks is giving away seven days of free access to their library, and yes, you can keep using the images you download forever because you get a royalty-free license with them. So be sure to check that out at storyblocks.com slash YouTube, or you can click on the link in the description and start downloading today. So now, let's continue. First things first, by far the most important thing you need to do to protect your devices is to simply keep them up to date. And I know you're probably rolling your eyes at this because it's so obvious, but there might be some things you're forgetting. For example, when's the last time you checked to see if your router's firmware is up to date? Another really important piece of software to update is Java. Not to be confused with JavaScript, Java is installed on practically every computer, so it's a huge target, but most people don't even know to update it. To do this, you actually wanna search Java in the start menu, if you're on Windows, and it should bring up the Java control panel where you can check for updates there. I'd also definitely recommend going into the security tab there and unchecking the box that says enable Java content for browser and web applications because you almost never see Java apps anymore and it's notorious for its vulnerabilities. As for the operating system itself, obviously you need to keep those automatic updates going no matter how annoying they seem. And if you're a Windows 7 holdout, or even, I shudder to think, Windows XP, you should really just bite the bullet and update to Windows 10, or the latest version for Mac OS if you're on Mac. Yeah, you might not like the look of Windows 10, but whether you want to admit it or not, Microsoft did beef up the security, especially in the latest Fall Creators update. Specifically, they just added some great software exploit protection directly into Windows that before was only available separately as part of the so-called Enhanced Mitigation Experience Toolkit. And on older version of Windows, you're just not gonna get that. Okay though, so we get it, keep everything up to date. Now we can get into some things that are a little bit less obvious. Still on the topic of Windows, one great thing you can do is to set your Windows account to not be an administrator, but rather a standard user. If you're running on an admin account, software that you run might be run on a high level of privileges by default, even though most programs don't require it. If you accidentally load up a piece of malware or a malicious website finds an exploit in your browser, that virus might now have admin privileges as well, which will give it free reign over your whole computer. You probably won't even notice the difference when running as a standard user anyway, and if a program ever does need to escalate privileges, you'll know about it because Windows will simply prompt you for the admin password, and then you can continue as normal. Another important feature built into Windows is user account control, which has been around since Vista. That's the thing that pops up a confirmation whenever you or a program wants to install itself or change a Windows setting or something. And even if you think it's a bit annoying, you should always keep it on the highest setting, which it should be by default, and don't always mindlessly just click confirm either whenever it shows up. Like, if you're just browsing the web and all of a sudden you get a UAC prompt for no apparent reason, you should check to see what actually caused it and look at it because there's always a chance some virus in the background just tried to execute, especially if you've visited a pretty sketchy website. Now, let's move on to some things that aren't just for Windows, such as your router. In the interest of time, I'm just gonna assume that you have the typical settings like a password on your Wi-Fi connection and the router firewall enabled like it should be out of the box. But one setting that is usually enabled by default that you should disable is WPS or Wi-Fi protected setup. 
and this is meant to make it easy to connect devices to your router by pressing a button on it, but it has been shown to have really flimsy security and undermines your Wi-Fi encryption. If your router has this, it would probably be in the Wi-Fi settings for your router, and if you don't know how to access your router's settings page, you can usually go into a web browser and type in either the address 192.168.1.1 or 192.168.0.1. The default password will depend on the manufacturer, but you can usually try admin for the username and either password or admin for the password. Oh, and yes, you should probably change those two or anyone else who connects to your Wi-Fi could go and change all your settings. Another router setting you should consider disabling, but not necessarily, is universal plug and play or UPnP. It makes it easier for devices or software to connect to the internet, but is also a big security vulnerability. However, you might need it, for example, if you have several Xboxes you wanna to connect to the internet simultaneously, or multiple people wanna use Apple FaceTime or something simultaneously, or other protocols. Basically, I would look in the settings and try disabling it, but if things stop working, just re-enable it. All right, next up, here's another really practical tip you can use, which is to use a third-party DNS service, such as OpenDNS, instead of the default one provided by your internet service provider that you're likely using now. If you don't know what DNS is, put simply, it converts any domain names you want to access into an IP address your computer can use. So when you type in google.com into your browser, your computer will ask the internet provider's DNS server what the IP address is for google.com. Then it gives you the IP and your computer connects to that, but it all does this behind the scenes. And the advantage of using a third-party DNS server is it could be faster, so web pages will respond faster. And in the case of OpenDNS, it has a big list of malicious websites and it will automatically redirect your connection away from that if you happen to stumble upon one of these bad websites. Google also has their own set of public DNS servers you can use, but they don't actually do any filtering. Now, to change your DNS, you can do it either on a specific computer or on your router, which would apply to all the computers on your network. And it's not as hard as you think. Go back to the router settings page and somewhere in the connection settings, you should see where it has an option for DNS or maybe static DNS, and it's a really standard feature that every router should have. But if you do see something that says dynamic DNS or DDNS, that's something different, don't change that. Anyway, then you just have to put in the two server addresses, which in the case of OpenDNS are 208.67.222.222 and 208.67.220.220. In the settings, these might be called primary and secondary DNS, respectively, so you'd put it in those fields. Okay, so that's DNS. And this next tip is pretty quick and basic, and hopefully should be obvious, which is to have an antivirus installed. And ideally, you want one that has real-time protection or something named similar to that. This is essential because it will prevent you from getting infected from viruses in the first place. When you're browsing the web, you might go on a website that is able to exploit your browser or even a browser extension and do a so-called drive-by attack. In these cases, without protection, a virus could infect your computer even without you doing anything. Also, it might be on a trustworthy website that was simply compromised, so you never know. A good antivirus program, along with the other tips about keeping things up to date, and running as a standard user on Windows, all will make sure you're safe even in these scenarios. All right, this next one is something you should be doing no matter what, and not just for security, which is to back up your data. Again, you might be rolling your eyes, but I know that there are a bunch of you still who haven't done it. And these days, it's easier than ever with cloud backup services that automatically back up everything online, or you can get an external hard drive and use Windows' built-in backup feature, which is dead simple. Ideally, you'd use both local and online backup. Like in the case of ransomware, a virus might actually hijack and encrypt your whole computer and the backup as well. Or if a thief breaks in your house, or if you have a fire or flood, your local backup might be destroyed. But of course, a local backup would probably be faster to restore from, so you can do both. Speaking of thieves and hard drives, one thing you should consider is encrypting your hard drive. And this is especially so on a laptop, which you're more likely to lose or forget somewhere, and it is easier to steal. The simplest option is Windows BitLocker. 
Normally, this used to be only for Windows Pro versions, and still technically is, but apparently many laptops and tablets that ship with Windows 10 or Windows 8 have what is called Windows Device Encryption enabled by default or as an option. To see if it's enabled, first go to Windows Settings, then System, and in the About tab, it should mention device encryption and whether it's enabled. If you don't see that anywhere, you can try searching for BitLocker in the Start menu and accessing the settings from there. But again, you might need Windows Pro to use it. Finally, I've got a couple really quick tips to finish up. I've said this one many times, but never connect to open Wi-Fi hotspots. If they aren't passworded, they aren't encrypted, which means anyone nearby can intercept your wireless signal and see almost everything you're doing. Also, be aware of online account security by using different passwords on every website. This is really important because if a website's database gets breached and you use the same password for everything, you better believe that that hacker is gonna have bots running to test out any username and password combinations in the database on all sorts of websites, not just the one that got hacked, so all your accounts would get hacked. Also for accounts, you should enable two-factor authentication when you can, where the website will send you a text with a second code to type in when you're logging in, so even if someone steals your password, they can't get into your account. So I think that covers the most important things you should be doing to protect your computer. And if you have any more suggestions that I might have missed, definitely let us know down in the comments. If you want to keep watching, here are some other videos you can just click on. And if you want to subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And also consider enabling notifications too by clicking the bell next to the subscribe button or YouTube might not show you my new videos anyway. But again, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.